Set. Today was our last big high intensity, high neuromuscular demand day of the week. A lot of sprinting, uh, some multi throws, and heavy weight room work. Started off with our standard high intensity themed warm up, a little more specific to the tasks of a high intensity session. Went on to some dynamic flexibility work, uh, focusing on the lumbopelvic hip complex and the hamstrings, as these are the most important areas that we need to target prior to a sprint session. Uh, then went into some sprint development drills. Uh, these were again, geared towards some of the movement patterns that I would like to see for the session, which is uh, speed focused, a uh, lot of movements in the A pattern. So high knee runs, high knee skips, etc. And then the sprint session itself, the multi eventers and long jumpers, had the option to do pole vault approach runs or long jump approach runs. Everyone did long jump approach runs. It's a little bit different than a flat acceleration in that we're working on rhythm and accuracy at the board. That yellow cone that you'll see there is actually a surrogate for a long jump board. So we're working on accuracy into that. Other athletes had effectively a repeat sprint workout, repeated sprints with a insufficient rest in between reps and a longer rest between sets. And a couple of the newer athletes just had some short accelerations uh, because we're just gradually progressing them into speed. Uh, then moved on to the weight room. We had some hang cleans. We're moving singles at 80 to 85% at the top end. Wanted to see athletes hit two or three reps there. And then a little clean pull complex. So one rep from the floor followed by one rep from the hang using about uh, clean power clean max. Uh, following this, we hit up our K boxes. So we did a little variation here that's pretty intense, really targets eccentric overload. There's a full rep followed by a partial rep. We're using a pretty high inertial load. The full rep the role is to get that wheel really spinning and build up the inertial load. And then the task is to really get the athletes to try to break as quickly as possible, throw on the brakes and stop it. You can see the, between the load being very high and uh, their new or novel exposure to this, that there's not a ton of difference between the full and the half. But as we progress over time, you'll see that they're able to stop the half rep much higher uh, and turn on the brakes a lot quicker, which is what we're looking for. Uh, following our K-Box uh, squats, we went to a drop catch RDL. So again, kind of focusing on this theme of enhancing eccentric and shock eccentric overload. The athletes actually let the barbell free fall and then caught it in a tense position at the bottom. So the, the barbell's load actually doesn't reflect the load on the body. They have to throw the brakes on really, really quickly. They're pretty strong athletes and we're achieving stimulus threshold in as light as 40K on this exercise. Uh, we wrapped up the session following these drop catch RDLs with some vertical med ball throws. It's a good way to uh, kind of reboot the nervous system after some heavy, heavy lifting. Uh, kind of a stealing a catch raise from uh, mentor my Dan path. So we did these heavy med ball throws, uh, vertical, really technically simple. Uh, athletes drive with full intent, getting full extension at the top. This is effectively our cool down, the last stimulus that the athletes will see on the day before they head home and recover for our next and final session of the week. Tomorrow we come back for our final session of the week, a very hard intensive tempo session. That'll be followed up by a much needed day of rest.